Uh, my name is Abdel Barada. I work for Colorado State University. I have been here since 1993. I manage the research center and I uh, do research, mostly agronomic research. And I'm also the PI, the lead person for the cover crops project. So the, the Southwestern Colorado Research Center is part of eight research centers across Colorado. We have uh, the environment here, it's a little dry. At the research center we get about around 15 inches of annual precipitation. Other places maybe varies from about 12 to 16, 18 inches. We have a little different uh, climate than uh, let's say Eastern Colorado. We get more of our precipitation from uh, snow than they do in Eastern Colorado. June is our driest month, May and June. And then uh, starting mid-July or so, we start getting monsoon and rains. So the crops here, we, we have irrigated in Monsoon County. There is, I think, about 60,000 acres of irrigated ground. But there is also quite a bit of dry land. And then Dolores County is another county when we, where we do research. And Dolores County has mostly dry land crops. Like winter wheat is the main crop in Dolores County. Uh, dry beans, uh, there is some little bit of alfalfa and there is a little bit of uh, pasture and, 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 and some CRP of course. So what we do here, we try to find the uh, crops and varieties that do the best here in terms of yield, yield quality, in terms of resistance to certain insects and diseases. We work with the uh, traditional crops and we also look at uh, alternative crops that can fit within the cropping systems. Farmers here, not all of them, they, uh, they use conventional tillage. So, you know, they will plow, they will disc the ground, they will work the ground several times. And then breaks up the soil. And then, uh, like when we have a lot of wind, like in the spring right now, we get quite a bit of wind erosion. And also our soils are very young, relatively speaking. They have low organic matter around 1% and they tend to crust when we get rain. The crop yields are quite low. People don't use a lot of inputs because they just feel like it's not going to pay off. You know, they don't apply fertilizer or very little and uh, not much herbicides or pesticides. So we did some work with the uh, minimum tillage and no-till and they do work, of course. No-till works in, in wheat fallow rotation or wheat based crop rotation they, they save water and the, the yields can be improved but again there are not a lot of acres of no-till here there are some farmers who are doing no-till and they find it uh, helpful but it's not going to help the soil's biological activity too much because you're not growing uh, plants and they don't have live roots and those microorganisms and earthworms of course they, they uh, benefit the soil and the environment they're going to mo mobilize some of the nutrients in the soil they're going to break down some of the material plant material and, and release uh, nutrients like nitrogen so what we started doing three, four years ago, we started really looking seriously at cover crops. Uh, we did a lot of uh, research to find out how cover crops can help our soils here. You know, obviously cover crops have been used in uh, other environments, more humid environments, with some with great success. Here we don't have as much water. So in a dry land uh, cropping system and with our uh, semi-arid environment, we don't have that much moisture to work with. In terms of soil moisture, well, how much are we going to use up by growing a cover crop during the fallow period? Are we going to use up the, the water that's stored in the soil? And there may not be enough soil moisture for the next crop, for the cash crop. 
So instead of having a fallow between two cash crops like winter wheat or beans or safflower or sunflower, having it just a clean fallow where you, you work the ground to control weeds, so we thought, well, if we grow cover crops during at least part of the fallow period, maybe we will may be able to protect the soil from erosion. And also by growing a live plant, then we, we, we're hoping that we'll help the, the soil. We can uh, increase the biological diversity. Maybe we'll have more microorganisms as a result of growing plants, crops on the, on the soil, on the ground and uh, earthworms and then we also if we are careful what cover crop species to plant we may also be able to improve uh, soil fertility for instance if we grow legumes that fix nitrogen over so many years we may be able to increase the amount of nitrogen that's available in the soil there are a lot of other synergies and interactions that will help in terms of nutrient availability whether it's nitrogen or phosphorus and also eventually in the long term may increase organic matter and if we increase organic matter of course we're going to have more uh, nutrients that are available that will be released over time and then uh, and then we're going to improve soil moisture retention you know the more organic you have in the soil the more moisture the soil can retain so those are very be very beneficial uh, things for for our environment so those are the things we are going to be looking at and again uh, we, this is a new project and, and it has a lot there is a lot of merits for using cover crops there are a lot of questions that we're trying to uh, answer one is what crop species do you use how many species you know before when we talk about cover crops we would think maybe one species or two species or three species or people are talking about cocktails or they use nine ten species sometimes even more mixes in, in, a, in a cover crop in, as a cover crop so so there are a lot of questions we are trying, uh, we're, we have several cooperators, farmer cooperators. So we have, uh, they work with their NRCS offices. And, and there is some uh, in NRCS, USDA NRCS, they have some incentives. You can get some, um, uh, some of your expenses paid for if you participate in equip and, and programs that encourage people to grow cover crops. We're trying different species, we're trying uh, some cereals like uh, rye, like uh, barley, uh, sor sorghum Sudan grass or Sudan grass, that's a warm season, uh, maybe even millet, we're trying uh, legumes like peas, uh, clovers, we're trying brassicas like uh, radishes and um, so we have different so different tests we have uh, different uh, cover crop mixes we're also doing the same thing at the research center but at the research center we have replications so we can uh, do statistics and, and uh, be able to tell if, if whatever changes there are in the soil whether it's soil fertility, whether it's uh, organic, you know, organic matter or soil moisture, we can tell if it's due to cover crops and not to something else. So there is also the cost that's very important. I mean, if we grow cover crops and then uh, it doesn't pay for the farmer or the, or the you know, it's just too expensive then people are not going to grow cover crops. So we're looking at that too. We have uh, one economist who is uh, collecting all the economic data, costs and uh, returns. And we'll see what works and doesn't work. 
So again, uh, we, there are a lot of parts to this, to this project. Right now, this is the first phase of the project. We're collecting soil samples to look at soil fertility using different methods. We're using this Haney, so-called Haney test, that also looks at soil health. We're looking at the standard soil test method to see how much uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and other nutrients are available in the soil before we plant the cover crop and then also before we plant the, the cash crop. And then we're doing, uh, looking at infiltration rate to see if cover crops will help the soil, the soil structure so that we get more higher infiltration rate. And we're looking at, of course, organic matter. We're also, we're also working with Cornell University. They have a soil test, soil health uh, analysis that they do a very comp comprehensive soil health uh, investigation. So we sent some, some samples to Cornell. So we're gonna look at all those data and see, well, uh, we, after two years, are these cover crops making a difference? In what way? Are they improving soil fertility? Are they improving soil health? We're also doing an earthworm test to see if there are earthworms in, in the soil with or without cover crops. We're doing the PLFA to look at microorganisms in the soil. And so we want to see the diff if there are differences, if coral crops will uh, improve soil health, soil uh, organic matter, soil fertility, we're, if they uh, were able to suppress weeds enough that we don't need to spray so much. So that's another thing, if we are growing cover crops, that this may have applications with uh, in organic farming, because if we're growing these this plants, these cover crops, and we were able to improve, let's say, soil fertility, then we won't have to apply as much fertilizer. Again, the same thing with weeds. If we can suppress weeds, then we don't have to use, or growers don't have to use as much herbicide to control weeds. So there are a lot of different, and then soil erosion. If we can reduce soil erosion, then we're going to conserve the soil and we're not losing that topsoil where a lot of the nutrients are. There's a lot of benefits, we just have to see if which ones pan out here for in our environment, which ones, uh, what, what benefits we can get out of coral crops in our environment. And then again, you know, and, and then we're look, looking at the effect, we're going to be looking at the effect of the impact of coral crops on the cash crop, on the following crop. Where are we, where we have coral crops and then, uh, then we grow cash crop like winter wheat. Are we going to impact, is that going to impact the yield, the grain yield or whatever, crop yield? Is that going to improve it? decrease the yield or there, there is no change, is it going to improve or affect the quality, crop quality, like protein content? Anyhow, so this is very exciting. We're working, we have a, a strong team, a large team of uh, researchers, uh, NRCS professionals, uh, farmers. We work also with the conservation district and we're very excited about this project.